everyone here already knows about the Cancel Project, and so I'm not going to, I feel like I don't really need to talk about it as much anymore. But um, after the session that we had last week, a couple of things kind of struck my interest, and one of those things was that maybe Dallas doesn't actually want to be a community center for the arts. Maybe Dallas is happy being fractured and segmented in its own particular neighborhoods. And so thinking in those terms, I was kind of like, well, maybe we need to make a list of what it is that we want as a community. And so today, well, the article that I wrote in the, in the Observer was about making lists and really thinking about what it is that we want as an arts community in Dallas, where we want from it. And that, so I decided, instead of going straight from the problems to the solutions, that we needed sort of an interim between where we talked about what we wanted um, from Dallas as a community. And I don't anticipate today is going to be as long as the other two sessions, which were each four hours, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'm sure you all are too, so it's so beautiful outside. Um, but basically, I wanted to pose that question, what is it that we want? And, and throw it out there for all of you guys, so we can just write whatever it is that we want on, on the wall. And I think this can be in terms of Central Track, it can be in terms of UT Dallas, it can be in terms of Dallas as an ecosystem. And so it's a really broad question. Um, but I'm going to start it by saying I would like equity and honorariums. And that's a really big one, but um, we don't get paid for the work that we do here at Central Track. We're all kind of here, living here, and, and producing and working and making ideas out of the goodness of our hearts and hide. <laughs> so I'm going to open the question from there and invite you guys to write on the wall and talk about what it is that you write. Um, so here's the line, so let's take it back to it. I imagine you have well, I mean, responding literally to this, can you uh, expand on what equity is for you professionally, given that, like, um, myself, like, I don't have that perspective because yeah. I'm not, I'm not in that sphere at the moment, and I haven't done that yet. You know, I like went through undergrad, and that's like yeah. the extent of what I'm doing. You know, basically, what I mean when I'm saying equity in our areas is being paid in an equitable way for the work that I'm doing. So for instance, if I'm getting paid for an exhibition that I'm producing over the course of two years, and I'm being paid $5,000 for that exhibition, that's no money at all when you really break it up into the amount of time that I spend working on it. Um, and that's kind of something that a lot of people don't talk about in the art world. You know, I, I was actually at a museum in Austin recently, and someone mentioned to me, well, this, curi this guest curator came in and did this show, and she got paid tons of money for it. And I was like, well, how much money did she get paid? And they said she got paid ten thousand dollars just to do this one show. And at first I was like, wow, that's a lot of money for this exhibition. But then I know the plan in this curatorial program, and I know that they plan five years out. So if you really think about it, yeah. she was planning this show for five years. And so when you think about that ten thousand dollars, it doesn't break down evenly. So that's one thing that I would like to see in the art world in general is equity and honorariums for all the work that we do. Maybe that's like a PR kind of thing. Value in paying people? Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really want to do that. Like, if that's not, not really what's about, that's not where your passion is. But it should be. Yeah. You know, they've influenced each other. Yeah. Well, I have a question because you're talking, you're, is, is your premise of what do we want for the city of Dallas with the artist being part? of the equation, because when we talk about equity for artists, to me, that's a part, mm -hmm. but not my major. Oh, what's your major part? Um, I'm trying to think it through, because it's hard. Yeah. And, and I hate to go back to what I think about, okay? But the word that always comes to my mind is vibrancy. And what I never see in Dallas, <laughs> and I never see it isolated. I never see Cutting edge, which is a funny word, but I hate to use it, sure. or something new or something that is unusual. It happens, but I never see it before it happens. I never hear about these things. Mm -hmm. So, would it then be something in terms of um, vibrancy and challenging work? Mm -hmm. Challenging. <laughs> 
fostering experimentation. Because I think, for example, in Brussels and in Copenhagen, they, they put a lot of funding into experimentation. So when you, are, when you want to do a project, they don't say how many bums on seats are you going to fill. Yeah. They're interested in the ideas and they're not interested in the end product. So and through that you get you know, cutting edge stuff because people are you know, pushing boundaries. So, so it's supporter funding. I mean, funding is certainly part of it, but just someone saying you can use the park. Okay. Sure, right. That's true. There's no... Um, it's not trying not to be it's like you get these opportunities and maybe the backing isn't there or the direction isn't there. Um, also you know, what you were saying. Like when you go to other places to be an alcoholic, when you go to places that aren't Dallas, it's like I feel uh, my time in North Texas, it's like, yeah, that we, there's like this comfortability of like affluence, but it doesn't spill over into becoming like, because a lot of the people I know that make the most um, technically challenging work, formalistically challenging work, they're all like poor working artists that, that either had to like wrangle it by living out of an RV or they're fucking electrical engineers that make a ton of, ton of money and they have no time. Or nurses or like surgical technicians. I feel like I see the most experimental, engaging work from a, like, in my time in Dallas and in Texas. Sorry, do you mean people who have to have a day they have to have a day job that's nothing to do with the arts and then they produce <coughs> in the like in the evening? Or do you mean literally their experimentation is in a different trade? They're not even artists. Like I mean well they're creative in what they do, but the separation between like what like funding your work through your day job and then like going full throttle making it happen, it's like it's so like extreme in in my experience viewing it among my peers that it's like you have to make so much money like go to school for so long it, like the the space is so wide and then you hear about like <clears throat> my friends that go to Europe and stuff and it's like there's funding for these things and yeah you live on this little baseline that's like but I don't know just it's so different. are you saying that you want more why is it in Dallas why what's what's the disparity why is this affluence <laughs> Not where is it going? Like, what's the source thing for? So you, are you saying that you want more of, or you want less of a disparity between? I I want to personally not have to work forty six hours a week at thirteen dollars an hour, and like live in literally the cheapest apartment I can find, and then I don't have any options outside of that. It's like one of my. I mean, I like I do have options, but this is the path that I went through by investing in a degree. Like you're saying, like the system, you know, a curator in the system gets paid ten thousand dollars for like a legit curatorial exploit. That's kind of insane if you compare it to any margin of like what's the what's the poverty line for a four family household? What's the poverty line for a single working person? Like I've been working since I was fifteen, and my pay has never gone down. But I know it's not seriously. So what if? I guess what if what, what if the thing that we want is actually this? We want to follow models mm -hmm. being set forth, like Wage, for instance, that are supporting artists and, and advocating for artists. It's Wage posted right here. Exactly. I, I didn't know about this resource, yeah. and it's like, it's really yeah, cool. if someone had given that had like given me a pamphlet when I was a freshman in college, I probably would have given it the attention that it needs. But. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like we need some we need some gorilla people just like in Dallas needs that extra push I guess because people aren't talking about community I mean I'm, I'm trying not to unwind here. Yeah, you're right. Sure. Um why do you think that's a bigger issue like the reason that you model that as well, just because you don't do very well in Texas. Yeah, for sure. Austin is very very similar, it's having similar issues to what's going on in San Francisco, for instance, but Austin will never look at San Francisco as a model. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Dallas has a lot of models that they can look to as well. There's, this isn't the first time cities have gone through this, and this yeah. is not the first time we've had this conversation, but there is, no, there is no history of looking at other models to kind of help guide or create an ecosystem. So, so, so if we really not innovative, then we have to explore modeling, mm -hmm. whether it's Copenhagen or 
I'm wondering also, but maybe this is too much, but whether, whether there could be subsidised um, studios, or a way where people can actually make their work, because I think a lot of the time, I mean, this happened to me in London, that there were points where I would have to work from my from my bedroom, and I didn't have enough space to build an installation. Yeah. So maybe um, if if you can prove that you're, you know, you spent a certain amount of time in the field, or that you've done a degree, or that you've done a certain number of shows, you know, that I'm not sure how people work out, you know, who's eligible for sub subsidised living, but some way of actually helping us if we're not making a lot of money that our cost of living is lower. Yeah, it, there's been a proposal that's never gone anywhere because it doesn't get out of, of the art community. When, when we do all of the polls, uh, artists for the most part aren't seeking housing, we work space. And the city has a lot of property that is not doing anything. And, and they could give, and I hate to talk about money, but they could give incentives to tax write-offs to people who own the buildings, if we don't, and, and give them an abatement if they rent them at low cost or they give it for a period of time. Mm -hmm. That's been around. Like say, it's, there's, it, it just doesn't go anywhere. They, mm -hmm. they talk about it, but, but there are all kinds, if you get to the pragmatic side of it, there are all kinds of ways that other cities that you model after have gotten money bases. And if they're forward thinking, they go into experimentation and innovation instead of just supporting the developers. Yeah. It doubts between the group and the developers. So maybe another thing is that we need different kind of alliances that we have. You know, you know again, the models of other city somehow they got coalesced. Mm -hmm. yeah. The artists, the institutions, and very rich people. Yeah. Who really are. So we don't have very many of them so far. Responding to that, I, something um, that I think about a lot that I want is like, as some kind of information, communication, infrastructure mm -hmm. that manifests itself through like social capital. I mean, that's not, and it, it, I mean, that's a really broad way of describing it. It's like we don't have those things, but I want like the city to get behind it. Yeah. And like, I mean, we're, like, we're on, you know, this is seven people, I can't tell. Um, but we had, you know, we had a handful of people last time. Like, we're already having these conversations. I just, um, and again, I have no experience with city government either, so like, other than that one time, like, forever ago back home. But, yeah. She's, she's just wondering about this thing, sorry, for yeah. Like, <laughs> but then again, I guess you need patrons to use those resources, and it's like, well, I think not? what you started to say, information, is actually really important. So like, yeah. a website would consolidate the information about everything that's happening in the arts, just the visual arts, not like, not dance, not theater, just the visual arts. I think that would be huge because a lot of times it's not access. People don't know where to go or know what to see. Accessibility. Right. It's like we're not even fighting about something that, I mean, we're talking about things that don't exist and that we're, we want to like, make happen. Also, I, I think that sense of um, information and, um, and maybe subsidised subsidised living or subsidised studios is also that that um, necessity for community. Um, uh, that being the polar opposite of isolation, and I think a lot of artists are really isolated. Yeah. yeah. And I think you know, for example, I would much prefer my studio is in a building with 15 other artists mm -hmm. than, um, you know, in the back of my apartment or in the back of a shop because someone's given me a space. I think we need to be around each other um, so that we can have regular dialogue, that we can do studio visits, that we can bounce ideas around. I don't think 
growth um, and development um, happens alone. I don't think you know we're all just these um, incredible geniuses that don't need input from anyone. I think we need we need to be stretched, and that's one of the one of the main reasons to go to, to college. I mean. You, you go to medical school because you need to actually learn very specific things, but you go to art college really because you need other people to talk school. to. And we need to continue that sense of community after art school. And for people that don't go to art school, then they need that community. What well, everyone needs community is... Oh gosh, well, I mean in a very literal way, like what do I want? I want yeah. a... Um, a big old house with all these <laughs> artists that can live there and I would like that to be cooperatively owned and I, then you could have a series of houses throughout Dallas and they can have different focuses and one could be like women only and like, that's what I want. <laughs> so I you know, but conditional out of all these things we wanted to do was more activism. Yeah, artists. Absolutely. And one of the things we were missing in Dallas is activism among the artists. For example, some of the, remember when the guys in Soho, uh, you know, were doing abstract expressionism? And they had, Yeah. Like, there's just like I feel like there's just got to be a different way of thinking about. 
Yeah, just that goes into like equity and yeah. experimenting with new models, yeah, right? Exactly. Like yeah. we can be open and we can have those conversations like at a forum or yeah, like at a, at a session. But then how do we, you know, if you're talking about the economy, we have to have pretty direct conversations with like the industries that run that stuff, right? So like we need to facilitate those conversations too. Yeah. Well, one example, for instance, is my sister's saying a solid one. So I'm sorry, I'm using it. It's quite a big service. Mexico City for, for years and for like decades has had a really good recycling program. And part of that now, people can take recyclables to sort of an open, what is it called? Um, farmer's market. Like if you need to get rid of batteries, and you don't want to put batteries in the trash can, you actually take them to this farmer's market and you can get avocados with your batteries. And those batteries will be recycled, as an example. Or like old radios, or like plastics, whatnot. And you get food in return, which is actually an incredibly successful thing. Like you have to get there like before noon, which nothing ever happens in Mexico before noon, so it's really good. <laughs> but it's a really, it's a really successful model. A lot of birds have been using it, and a lot of people in the community have been using it just because it's like everyone has something Cycle. So it like kind of is a cyclical thing where you're not just disposing of things, but you're actually kind of creating resources for other people as well. So yes, yeah, it's really cool. So it's kind of along these lines of like thinking creatively in terms of what we have, what we can use, what we can make. Let's push the city for that. I mean, would that be cool? Fair part. Yeah. 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 And they actually are worth like the price of the cost of the car. Really expensive there anyway. Uh, okay. um, so you can take them. That whoever it is that is collecting the items that you're taking to recycle, um, we'll collect everything and send it to the proper distribution centers to be recycled again and get reused with the market. So we're proud. We can have this was one of the the ideas that has come about, which is you would get this big open space like in the West Bottoms over where none of the world is, and you would have a Mercado. Yeah. And it could either be an artist's Mercado where you trade art things, or, or you know, a community and an art thing where you can recycle things. And, and it's a great idea, okay? And, and we don't do it. So. Someone has to take a yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that just all we're lacking, really? Is just like leadership? Initiative and like leadership? Just, I don't know. I think it's a, I think it's a problem in Dallas. I mean, it, it, it appears in a, in a certain way in Dallas, such that, <laughs> it, like, I don't know, we don't have the time or the drive. Like, when I, I was working with an independent space, it was literally like some people funding their income into like a clandestine art space. And yeah, it's like after a while, you realize it's just like you spend money on the returns not there, and it, it's hard to do that. <laughs> it takes a lot of energy to like put on four shows a month, like even at any at any scale at all. I mean, I didn't have to live there, so I was always like, yeah, I would, I would like if I could, I would come in and like set up rules for every resident and write out contracts. Like, Eight hours a day, and just like I would do that, but I have to work. Yeah. Well, Dad, I guess I'm gonna ask you this question. I just haven't been working in the game for so long. Is it a lack of leadership and lack of initiative? I mean, I know you have been here doing things for a really long time, and you're really starting to see the, the growth of that and the progression of that. So, is that really an issue in Dallas? Like, there is just a lack of people like you. Oh. Yeah, the community of people who care can increase for sure. Uh, you know, I think I've been sitting all week with um, what came up last week yeah. about, um, you know, whether or not people actually want artists themselves, actually want this. Um, and it's, you know, very interesting sit with because one I'm a structuralist and you know I'm not on that like you know personal responsibility respect to 
respectability politics bullshit. But on the other hand, <laughs> there's you know there's 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 something that felt very true about that, um, and you know that balance. So yeah, like that would be on the top of my chart of. You know, because and I think that really plays into because kind of the things we're talking about right now. You know, they're ultimately they're, they're very social things, yes. right? And um, you know, as a socially engaged artist, you know, like there aren't any. I, I think I might be the only one who lists that as like the thing that they do, uh, and then there's like maybe 12, less than 20, uh, like who like would fall into that realm or actively working on projects that fall into that realm, uh, kind of here in town. So, uh, you know, I think this is a city that's dominated by modernist painting. Uh, And I think there's a type of thinking, uh, <laughs> conceptually, um, and making that type of work or being that type of artist, especially in 2015, that, uh, you know, extends outwards to what your priorities are and how you interact and things of that nature. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I guess at the top of what I would want is like more, more socially engaged. Um, artists. What do you say? What do you say? What do you say? You think there's an interest like that? No, no, no. Is there an interest for it? Is there, you know? Yeah, I mean, like, like there's, there's an interest. There is really difficult. To get, and this is just an thing, this isn't, you know, just this, like, critical mass is a tough thing to achieve um, because, you know, life, you know, life is also a real thing. And so, you know, I'm just thinking about, like, even this room, you know, like, people, you know, that I've sat with on panels or listened to on panels who you know, have done great work and thinking about what they're doing now. And many of them, you know, are very much like, I think kind of the life cycle of artists of Dallas is that like you'll catch, and this might be artists everywhere too, I don't think this is as good as Dallas. Um, you catch fire for a little while, you burn real bright, real hard for a year, two years, you know, you're, you're pouring it all. Um, and then, get really tired <laughs> of that and so you kind of withdraw and uh, try to leverage whatever you got while you're burning real brightly to kind of help yourself live and then you kind of find your little zone and you know you ride you ride on that for a while until maybe the next thing that hits you the front right happens. Um, and so, you know, there's, uh, yeah, there's hope because, like, I don't know, there's, like, people who, like, didn't care, frankly, um, about this stuff who are now starting to care and think and have to talk more about community uh, and building communities and using that language. So, yeah, it's, it's good. I think in this case, too, <laughs> what I would like to see Dallas is artists who stay. Obviously. And just thinking along those lines, you know, you can kind of write that you can kind of stick it out for a few years, you have that like fire, and then you just kind of get tired and fizzle out. And either you stay and sort of start working elsewhere, or you just leave. So I think I would like to see a community that likes force artists and stay in Dallas and, and creating a bigger conversation. So, so maybe the nature of arts is uh, to move on, and they can move on right here mm -hmm. because they're there. 
So you need to create something where there is energy and activity and people can come in yeah. and out. Yeah. Yeah. Because artists, they're always there for a short time. Not, I mean, even in New York, when it's so hard. But you mean they need things that force out? Because of course no, like I, think, I think when you're an artist, sometimes something urges you to do something, and sometimes you need to go back to your work. And as long as people are coming in and out and maybe a structure, like you talked about that art council, where different people can come in and still be activists or social practice people and get messages out all the time, maybe then you can sustain. Yeah, you know, I mean, like, I, I think Dallas is really one of the most perfect places in the entire country to make a home as an artist. Um, so what do you to, to, to have, to, as far as a home base, and, you know, it's like, no one, or I shouldn't say no one, but, <laughs> um, you know, the idea of, like, you know, like, you're an artist, you're going to go places, mm -hmm. right? And from like just a simple like Dallas is an easy place to go to a lot of other places from like an airport transportation situation. It's also like a very affordable place uh, to be, you know, like in, in terms of, and people are nice here. Um, nice. Just smart. Uh, you know, and so it's just like, I mean, I think there's a lot of pluses. Um, you know, it's like, you know, it's, so well, I mean, two years ago, we didn't speak in the more, one time. More people, more people were staying, though. Like, I mean, like, like, like some of the people from three years ago, right, left, right? And, you know, that was like, I think a lot of 2014 was like people personally kind of emotionally dealing with some of those people leaving. Um, at <laughs> least from what I could, <laughs> could tell. Who are these people? Um, Lucy, Sally Glass, Marcia, Andrew Blatt, and And these were people who were good pop ups. They were having things in their homes and, and they were they were really yeah, publicizing. It was really sort of getting vibrant. And then one day, almost simultaneously, they looked up and said, I'm not going to go anywhere. Well, I mean, they were, there, there wasn't, there wasn't the, there wasn't the resource. I mean, like, there was a the desire to stay here, you know, like, like, Andrew and Orange in particular, like, they wanted to stay in Dallas, but, um, you know, just the job sense. opportunity happened in California, and so, yeah, you know, and that's, that's, that was the deal, similar with, uh, Sally, so, so you know, it's like, so there's like, and that's, that's why I go back to the stretch role, because there's like a real, like you can want, you can want Dallas as much as you can, even I, uh, you know, like, have moments where I'm just like, well, you know, like, if, if, if the job, if like, the love, if the support, uh, it's somewhere else, you know, it's like, oh, I'll try, I'll get the city every single chance lots of So what is it to say then that, that, you know, if, so in the case of Sally, for instance, you know, Mom's very used to saying, you used to say, great for her, but well, do you see it, do you see Dallas as a welcoming place to come back to? So she went for this job, she's going to be amazing, she's going to do amazing things, she did so many jobs when she was here. Would it be an issue of if she came back to Dallas, it would be like taking a step backwards for her, you know? Or would she come back? Which, what would she come back she to? She can come back to, it's, you know, it's like, yeah, you can come back and pick up the grinds, but if I have to, if I have to work all the time in order to, like, literally pay my bills, I definitely am not doing that for 15 years, so, it's like, do I want to do it now? That's, that would be something to do that. I was like, that was something to do that. I would say so. I mean, but I'm also not from here in Italy, is, right? You know, there, there's, there's, this is still not there, I mean, to be frank, I mean, but there's more, there's more to come back to and hopefully people continue to do work so that there's more and more.
to come back to. I think like if you aren't from Dallas and you're coming in, Dallas is like that's probably the best way as an artist, honestly, to uh, experience Dallas is because we've all made success in our history of uh, welcoming and loving and fetching artists who are not from here. Uh, because there's, you know, some insecurity about uh, whether or not uh, artists who like are from Dallas can make things that are culturally significant. Um, which, you know, <laughs> I'm having a fun time disproving. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's, yeah. And you don't have to do odd, odds and ends. Like, not that there's, not, not there's anything wrong with that, but it's like, you... It's like, okay, do you want a career? Do you want a salary? Or do you want to do the other thing? And like, they're getting farther and farther apart. Well, because like, it has to be something. Yeah. Yeah, because it also comes to you if you're working so many jobs that you literally don't have the brain power to be creative or anything. Yeah. Or focus one hundred percent. And then what's your equity as an artist that you can't be autonomous? But where does it, guys, with all the respect, yeah. what places does that happen? I mean, what right, places exactly. do new young artists or people who've been around a while get the, the golden egg and they get saved for their life? It just does never happen. That's right. So how do you get the vibrancy knowing that you might move on and people will come in? How do you create something in a structure that's going to welcome and sustain for a period of time? You talk about the city as if it were a rational organization that <laughs> doesn't have billions of competing things. And we have never made a sufficient, we try, but we haven't made a cogent case. And we get trapped into saying, well, it has to be business like it has to be this, it has to be that. But there is something about having a vibrant community that supports other things. And it's it's all temporary. It's not. I think that's a good point, Sophia. Yeah. I, mean, no, I think the issue of working many jobs is something that we do need to talk about. It's something that we do need to do. I work a ton of jobs all the time. I'm writing for multiple magazines all the time, but it took a long time and many random ass jobs to get there in order to sustain myself. Right? I think it's a really important part of, of the process of being a creative person in the field. I also think another really important statement that I tell people all the time is to think that not everyone is an artist. There's lots of professionals in the art world that are not artists. You can be a marketer, you can be a PR person, you can be development, you can do all kinds of things without having to sell your work, for instance. You can be curated, that's one, that's one professional area within the, the visual arts. And so it's also thinking of where you fit into that ecosystem that can support a vibrancy as well, that is, again, thinking outside the box and creative. And I think that's a really important thing that we don't ever really the fact that there are many different jobs within the arts that you can't pursue, but you get there by working 20 jobs at once. Yeah. <laughs> you know? sure. So, what in the communities you both are in and you've been in that have made it vibrant? When you go to the place where there's vibrancy, even though it may be a pain in the ass in a thousand other ways and things are all wrong in certain situations, what can you put your finger on? Was it also the artists themselves who had more camaraderie, who tended to be closer together? Or what was it? What was it in your place and your place that makes them more first, exciting? First thing that popped into my mind was criticism and the constant criticism that I heard from the And that's not necessarily in, in writing or whatever. That's constantly criticizing your to try and make it better. To be transparent. Revolutionary attitude. Right. Um, and that's the first thing, is not becoming complacent. I think we're being a bit hard on Dallas. I don't think the art community here is complacent, and I also don't think that it's vibrant. Oh. She <laughs> <laughs> can have it, it's fine. No, it's <laughs> I think the Dallas art community is 
uh, a very warm community. I think it's very open, it's not competitive, um, it's, it's easier in some ways than what I've seen in London or New York, um, as far as the actual artist group itself, and the galleries, and the curators are much more friendly, they, they let in newcomers. I, I don't think it's... I don't think it's that the artists are better in another city or um, people are doing more interesting work elsewhere. I think this city is, is a younger city than cities in Europe, for example. I mean, it's a younger country yeah. as far as, um, I mean, if we don't go back as far as um, Native American um, existence, here, but if we just go to the next one. Um, the, I mean, it's, it's a young country, so you're comparing it to Belgrade or Berlin or Copenhagen, it's different. Um, but I think the funding is maybe better in some of these other places. I think maybe the uh, initiative for experimentation, it's a less capitalist society. Um, the audiences are probably different as well. Um, we don't have healthcare problems. I mean, I, I don't have to worry about paying those bills. Um, so there's various things that are different. The social structure is more left wing. But if we're in a new country, if we're in a newer country, that normally goes along with innovation and creativity. Right. And, and, and I know what you're saying, people are very nice here, and they participate in a very gentle way, but I don't see much where people are pushing anything, really. And I also think that it's really specific in Dallas, because there are models in the United States that do so much different. other cities that are participating in a very active way in their arts and artists, why doesn't Dallas necessarily do that as a community, as a city? What's happening there that isn't making it or facilitating it? Well, I wonder if part of this is tied up with the uh, sort of percentage for the arts program or public arts, because nobody's even talking about that. And so I wonder, first of all, can a program like that ever even result in making good art the way it's it actually plays out in practice. Um, and I also wonder if it leads to a sense that it's done through agencies. And so no one really takes responsibility, and maybe it even leads to a belief. A belief that the community has already done everything it needs to do. It's, it's yeah. dedicated this percentage to the arts. So what more do they right. need to give? Right. Yeah, I think there's like a, just kind of maybe a lack of ownership or something. I think we need to get radical about engaging art patrons. Not that people aren't trying, and I've seen it a lot, even in a short amount of time. But like, I, I, I personally have seen a lot of complacency on the side of, <laughs> we want to know about somebody, on the side of patrons, um, in things that I'm trying to do or put on or whatever, I don't know. And so it's like, I think, and also I would like to, to, you know, continue engaging in a conversation with either, like, patients themselves or agencies or the city about allocating the resources we have yeah. that, like, that, you know, our peers can do to, like, actually churn some stuff out, like, you know. So, like, organizing? Activism. Yeah, um, so the previous question about like things that are different, I think um, one of the biggest things I've noticed this year, uh, traveling a lot more, um, has been there is, I don't think by and large there's exceptions, great exceptions in Dallas, but by and large I don't think uh, artists and creatives here are as ambitious as in other places. Um, and I'm not sure, well, I mean, the, well, but you can say that about a lot of places anyway. Um, yeah, like, I, there's kind of a lack of ambition, um, that can be really disappointing, <laughs> that makes it to me. Can you define that a little bit more? Uh, in what way are other artists more ambitious? Um, I would say, 
Okay, so one one example is that you know there's not that there aren't there's maybe two three that I know of personally in Dallas who like work at who are really working at like the intersection of say food justice, environmental justice, and like you know, creativity, right? Which is you know not a new thing. Um, we're very well developed. So like, you know, you're you go to uh, you go to New York and you know there's artists creative led, you know, farms, right? Uh, doing like, you know, kind of the hydroponic farming, fresh food, things of that nature, right? As a way of sustainability of the creative community, as also a way to generate, you know, income to, you know, be literally and metaphorically one's creative uh, endeavors and practices, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. And that's that? like, and that's like, and that's like not, that's like not like even, that's like not a do no, whatever deal. Um, and so, uh, it's just crazy because I think mean, you can like just go example, example, example of like stuff, right? That like is, is yeah. Like that just works. So you saying that And there's like, not like that like like people here are still stuck on trying to make paintings that were cool in the fifties and sixties. Well, I also think <laughs> just to kind of piggyback on this in terms of complacency and ambition, um, the the phrase that I wrote about this is Dallas. When I ask about the upper world tier, and I ask people within the upper world tier, I say, how is it that this can be the way that it is? I think just giving that answer, well, it's because it's Dallas, is in a way a signal of complacency as well. So what, yeah. what this is Dallas means is what? What it means in people's minds, according to the strata, is that we want to conform to what we perceive the norm is that would get us accepted. So there's a high need, it seems, across class lines about what constitutes acceptance. And artists do buy into that. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about who we produce. Why can't we do X in the middle of the, you know, whatever? So it's a conformity issue. We, yeah. we value conformity. Yeah, you know, what's really interesting too is just kind of our culture at Dallas is not just the artists, but just the kind of some of the sort of things in general populace, like this kind of say like what they look or something like that. Like the general populace is making a lot of money. And when you have like these big events just like the Del Mar Fest, when you go down there, and there's just not necessarily any kind of interesting things as yeah. far as like integrity. It's like sentence. Yeah, but like, not quite that. I mean the big was center stuff were very hard on the change and stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I can't hear you. Oh, sorry. Um, so you go down to the Dijon Art Festival. It's a very big event that is put on, and you have individual artists as managers that I commend like the amount of work they put into the their craft and what they actually end up making. However, the art not is isn't necessarily interesting from a contemporary art standpoint. It's more kind of the decorative art stuff. So when just, you say vendor in this context, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. And it's not, they're not selling contemporary art. They're it's craft. Yes. yes. It's craft. Yeah. Work. Yeah. I mean, it's craft hobby, work, hobby, hobby. Yeah. Or are, you know, people that, I mean, that's what they do. They distribute this product. It's like, it's the way the economy is in America, you know, it's like. But I have to offer criticism to us in the arts field as well, is that we have not also agreed. That's, that's an area of opportunity for us as artists. Just walk into this like Dean Ellen Arts Fair and say, hey, there's a place for me here. I can show something. Well, I can make a booth with someone else. But I then we get snobby, right? Because you feel like, oh, I don't want to be here. You know, yeah, you know what the reality of that is like? You you have to those events are successful in that they are re happening repeatedly, annually. Yeah. Like we've got lots of that stuff, you know that And they're always successful. There's <laughs> the thing is they're like saturated. I'm just like not even gonna comment on that word. <laughs> They're saturated, and so you have to displace that, and then you become the one percent of the like machine that's running. And you're like, I'm here to innovate, and people are like, 
I want a seven dollar pretzel. Yeah, but you know, that's a different audience. Yeah. Like, yeah. So when you do engage They're just, it's just, you know, it's just a small, yeah, I, but I don't know. 
Okay. So, so, like, oh. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I definitely, I definitely appreciate that. And I think that's like the other side. You have to be, you have to be able to walk and chew gum, uh, essentially. Um, because, like, yeah, like, I mean, I, what the, I think we should be, as we talked about last time, like, having there to be, like, artists driven real estate companies um, that are buying land and making things sustainable and uh, creating, you know, kind of many sustainable economies inside of Dallas, um, which doesn't take that, that takes organization, really, yeah. um, and, tr and building trust, essentially. Um, so yeah, I think that's you know kind of one one route. But on the other hand, we always talk about like how people are doing like this ambitious, crazy, great work out of places. Well, once again, that doesn't come from a vacuum. I don't, you know, I was, you know, got very serious about being curious about like how people are making their work. Like you know, it's like where did that come from? And you know, like in those early stages, right? Like before it becomes the thing that everyone like is like, that was so great. Um, yeah. You know, when it's just like something that may be great, may not be great. You know, like who's, like, you know, those people got the 5000 or $10,000 support from somewhere to keep developing it. And that's the important part. Do you think that we have a lack of um, innovation and creativity? Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to do it with a straight face, but go ahead. <laughs> um, you know, I think I think UGD Central Track is really uh, the most innovative, uh, at least more Dallas-based uh, program. Uh, but it's crazy because it's like this barely a UGD program. I mean, if many. Is that why it's, is that why it's happening? Um, you know? It's happening because Hyde is at every meeting. Mm -hmm. It's Hyde. There's definitely yeah. 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 For the record, I went to UT yesterday and I spent the entire day there and I met with the dean and I met with Rick and I met with people in the art and technology department. Um, so just put that on the record. <laughs> <laughs> I went. Yeah. But yeah, it's totally disconnected. It's extremely sad. You know, was, like... What was it like before Hyde came? That was... It was, uh... uh well, you know, I would, I would... I would... I would say this, that, you know, because I don't, I don't... I can't trace it to the very start, right? When, when I entered in, uh, Curious Terranova was the director, right? And for me, like, that was one of the most important, like, this space, because she was focused, and, like, this is literally the only space that was showing new media, uh, digitally-based art in Dallas, and, and, you know, it was, like, as an institution, because, like, you see, and, like, and it was, like, just that gap where, like, uh, and, uh, and or had just closed, yeah. right, um, and, uh, and so there wasn't, there wasn't like a commercial, and all the commercial galleries and half the commercial galleries, it was a recession, so half of them yeah. had closed. So they're, so they're literally like for like a year. Um, <laughs> this is it. Um, and so, and so, you know, I'll forever shout out, um, you know, kind of carrying that torch and that, you know, kind of tradition um, as like an important art form. But before, before, before her, it was started as an outpost for the residents. And they hired someone from the department who had great access to big money. Uh, and Rob Kendall, who was sort of the guy who knew Nancy Heyman, so they got grants, big money. But they didn't do very much because she was a traditional person. So for eight years or four years or whatever, I don't make it up, but, but that's, that was the, the initial impetus. And then we get punches of people for a short period of time, but then they get out as quickly as possible. Yeah, because I remember always saying, like, two years. Yes. 
so, I mean, so and high. And then there's the person, at least you're the person between Cherubim and high, but it's a lady, right? Is it eight chair? No, there's two, two, four. Well, it is. No, yeah, no, I think it was her, because she, she didn't even, it wasn't even a year, but then high is the whole thing down, so, right, since 2012. So, right. But can, can we also, is there a time Shout out. that no, Oh no, no, I said shout out. I said shout out. <laughs>
fit artists here to go out and see what's going on elsewhere. Because maybe one of the key things here would be that, I mean, for example, if you live in the United States, it's so costly to get to Europe, for example, that most people don't get to go and they don't actually get to see what other communities are like. So travel bursaries to spend six months in Belgrade or six months yeah. in um, Ghent or wherever it is um, with another body, you know, with another university or arts organisation and also maybe continue to do stuff like Central Trucks doing or bringing international artists so there's more cross fertilisation. But... One of these things is um, there's a Facebook group called the Dallas Art Scene. I don't know if you know part of it. There's a Facebook group called the Dallas Art Scene. It's like 3,000 members. Yeah. What is it? I wonder where those people are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's no agenda, there's no mission statement. I I love these tools, but like in Dallas, I'm gonna say that. It's like, yeah, you, you get, I mean, these people need direction. They need, we have the artists and the resources, and we even like kind of have the capital. We need like a freaking highway to like funnel this stuff, and, and maybe people haven't, I'm like, I don't know, yeah. Yeah, one of the I things, agree. One of the things too about like well, I always kind of joke around, half joke around actually about just being in some like, track like, and shows, like all the other as residents, it was like a bus or something like that to just go around because transit is I guess it's key in Dallas to do anything. Transit? Yeah. I mean it's the whole transit system, but that's it's a joke. It takes a long time to get it. I think the fact that it's two hours. I think the fact that this is a car city is a big, big issue. Um, the, fact that, the fact that one of the biggest things going against this city for me is the fact that it's a driving city. Yeah. So that's a problem with a lot of the, the cities in this country. But um, I was thinking of something else, is thinking also out of the box for residencies. Maybe schools should have um, artists in residence there that, that are, you're there for, six, for 12 months and you have your own studio and students come and hear about your practice and you maybe do social practice with the students and there are also companies like an electrical company or the Federal Reserve or the government here has an artist in residency. The KERA should have an artist residency. Yeah. That people should be, we should be bringing artists into different departments. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> I mean, but I think every city should be doing this. Sure. I mean, it would actually be really innovative if you did it here. Nope. I don't think it's going on anywhere really, but I mean, well, not sufficiently. First artist is from Chicago, and I can't remember his name, but I can look it up. Um, but he was sort of the, the, the artist that they tested it on, basically, because he was doing work that has to do with like, digital media. And so they, they sort of ported him for a year to come out, and it's a commercial venture, but obviously, you know, it's a tax write off at the same time. Right. I mean, I think that it's a mess around a lot of the developments. Right. Anything else? Well, I'd like for Sylvia to talk about kind of her, her impression of funding from public arts? Well, I, I, they're essentially the only funding for public art done through the city, okay, is through bond issues. We issue bond issues for development. There is no other money at all, and there's almost has been no maintenance money for seven years, okay? So when we get the money, it's attached to the building that the bond money is funding. One and a half percent can go for public art in that building. One and a half percent of the total cost is for the public art. What that does, what that means is that bonds get spent at long periods of time, in my case, seven years, and they tend to be for a specific purpose. The last several years, six years, have been for libraries and fire stations. So the only public art we've seen funded by the city is in fire stations and, and libraries. And you are required to talk to the community. And often the community is not an avant-garde liberal community. So you have people reading books. 
like some fire hoses and that. So that's the only money we expend in public art. We have a system that allows donations of public art, and over the last few years, we've gotten very, very few. Okay? People are not giving to the city because they can't see where it's going to go. Uh, they're not giving any more, so they're not doing any of the, the new guys. Okay? And so there's no money there. There is some movement lately just through some pressure to allow people who have our emerging artists or new artists or haven't had a public contract to get on the list if there's a laborious process to get money even for that art, the submission, et cetera, et cetera. But they now have a fund for under 50000 where you don't have to go through this laborious uh, thing and you can uh, now get chosen without this enormous uh, uh, red tape. Mm -hmm. And that's where Christopher Fly uh, has gotten the commission. Okay? He's been around a long time, he's not an artist, but he hasn't had the commission. That's all there is. There's no other source of public art than Dallas. There's no other money, there's no restoration. And the whole issue about the water theater that was uh, an issue of the accession really had deteriorated to the point that you would have to rebuild it. Dallas loves to tear it down. What? Dallas loves to tear it down. Sure, sure. It is a new Western city. So. But, but it isn't that. It's there. It's not. All over the years, we were talking about the recession. Um, and it's something I grapple with all the time. If I have to feed people in the city, if people are starving, if they don't have health care, I, I have a hard time myself saying, what do I do? Do I want to pull a dark or do I want to yeah. start or whatever? So there's those things. Yeah. But, there's, but what there is is innovation on how they can support public art mm -hmm. otherwise. They can allow us to use park land easier. We can finally use the LCC, those in your corner guards, which for some reason have no sculpture, to have temporary art projects. There's a rule in Dallas, and I don't want to talk forever. Well, maybe, but anyway, yeah. there's a rule in Dallas uh, about it having to be permanent art. Until recently, and Paul Rich, who made that last night, was one uh, of the instigators to say, how come we can't have temporary art? What kind of conditions can we do to have three months of No talk about paying me on this, okay? But still, it's a giving up venue at least. We don't even give a venue. You know, it's crazy because, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. And we have, we have places all over the place that you can stick things, okay? It, it well, won't, we be, won't be insured, no. it could be stolen, but, but, but there are things the city could be doing, and we have to crack with Romans. With you like him not, okay, that he talks public art. So that's the point. That should be our point of pressure. The other point of pressure, uh, Philip Kingston, who's head of the art and culture library, but at least he's trying to get permanent money that's not trying to buy it. The convention said we're going to give it to him, but that's what they're trying to get is a permanent problem in Houston. So you can do more things. So that's it. Wow. It's very discouraging. I mean, yeah. yeah. It's really surprising. It's good. Huh? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a you know how bad it is. <laughs> <laughs> If 10 people go to the mayor, 
if 10 people go in a group to the mayor's office, they actually believe it's a way. <laughs> if you get 16 letters and you're an elected official, you think there's something happening. And nobody, nobody anymore does that, okay? And, and, it, and it's so little that it teachers people. It really is. Yeah. Now, you have to stick on it to get the money. But the things that don't come money, like why are we using public space that's not being used? How do we have temporary? How do we get it? You always bring the word community because it's not true, but we, we like to believe it is. I mean, you all laugh at the, at the silly readers. It's been one of the most popular art projects, again, because the neighborhood felt they got some. Oh, I mean, the laughter at the meters is about the funny mechanism of the meters, yeah. not the particular meters themselves. As a person who's my roommate, is Eric Bacardo, who was one of the artists who did the meters, you know? I like that. <laughs> Okay, but, but is it possible to do a live feed? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> 